Hi, welcome to our show Around Thurston County. I'm your host, Patrick Babineau. Around Thurston County is all about the people, places, and issues that make living in Thurston County interesting. Today, we're in downtown Olympia at the administrative offices of Safe Place. Safe Place is the only 24-hour advocacy agency and confidential shelter for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault in Thurston County. Safe Place is a private nonprofit organization. Its sexual assault program is one of the oldest in the country. It has a board of directors, a paid staff, and over 90 trained volunteers to help operate the agency. Safe Place was formed on October 9, 1981, by a merger of Rape Relief and the Women's Shelter, two programs operated by the YWCA since 1973 and 1976, respectively. We're very pleased to have with us today the Executive Director of Safe Place, Mary Pontarolo. Hi, Mary. Hi. Thank you for having us here it's today. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Why don't we get right into the questions? Could you share with our viewers a little bit about what Safe Place is all about for those who may not know about it and what its primary mission is here in Olympia? Uh, Safe Place is, again, a sexual and domestic violence program. Our purpose is to be available for all sexual and domestic violence survivors throughout Thurston County. Mm -hmm. We also serve individuals from around the state when closeness to the abusive individual is compromised. They right. need a place to run away to. Right. A uh, safe place is um, a very interesting place. It is founded on social justice principles. Mm, wonderful. Uh, so its its purpose is basically to um, provide crisis intervention, but more importantly, even to the rest of the community, educate about the issues of sexual and domestic violence and do whatever we can to prevent it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We have a staff of 32, very fascinating staff, a very diverse staff. Mm -hmm. Thanks to, I think, in this community, uh, uh, Evergreen College and St. Martin's and South Puget Sound Community College, we have a rich resource of individuals That's that right. can help us within the community. Mm -hmm. And um, we have numerous uh, intervention strategies that we use and three 24-hour programs. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Who are the victims of uh, domestic violence and sexual assault? It's quite a range. I, we, I have worked with individuals that are 16 and 17, uh, all the way through to the mid-80s, wow. uh, men and women as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have primarily the services are, uh, unfortunately in our society, violence against women is just rampant. That's right. Uh, but services for men are also available, um, and it's important that everybody and anybody that's a victim of domestic violence knows that this is a resource for them. Mm -hmm. Our staff is very diverse, men and women alike, mm -hmm. uh, provide the direct services to victims. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we want to make sure that everyone knows that regardless of what religion, what age, mm -hmm. whether you are Native American, whether you're African American, mm -hmm. Asian, mm -hmm. um, it, it's an agency that is available for anyone and everyone 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, if someone needs uh, help from Safe Place, uh, what telephone number would they call, for example? If someone right now is looking at this show or watching it on YouTube or checking it out through Facebook and they know someone who needs help, what, what should they do? They can call. It's a, it's a 754-6300 is our 24-hour number, and that's available 24 hours a day, 365 mm -hmm. days out of the year. Wow. 754-6300, and we have staff available to answer the phone at any time. Mm. And the staff purpose is to basically try to uh, provide a strategy for safety planning mm -hmm. and to make sure that they understand what resources are available in the community. If a person is a sexual assault survivor and, for example, needs a forensic medical exam, mm -hmm. Safe Place right now is the program throughout four different counties that provides accompaniment to the St. Pete's Hospital mm -hmm. for forensic exams. So that telephone number is a conduit that brings people a whole host of, of services in our community that we can either provide as an agency ourselves or make connections with a number of other agencies in the community. Wonderful. And what is your service area? It's Thurston County primarily, mm -hmm. but uh, because sometimes individuals need to leave the community that they're in to right. escape, uh, we do serve a number of individuals from uh, Pierce County and uh, uh, Grays Harbor, mm -hmm. uh, just all over the state and, of course, all over the country as well. Wow. So is this kind of a regional uh, uh, domestic violence uh, uh, hub or a center for help it's, for this 
few uh, this southwest uh, Washington area? Well, Safe Place is, is was set up really to serve Thurston County. It was mm -hmm. created by. Um, activists actually from the YWCA and from mm -hmm. the surrounding community mm -hmm. uh, recognizing they wanted some a local organization to really take the leadership so mm -hmm. they created um, rape relief women's program and right. the domestic violence program and then uh, coordinate brought them together as one mm -hmm. uh, to serve Thurston County but because the needs are great and because we have to help people escape where they're living and, and uh, move people from place to place that's right we do serve a, a broader community and all of the agencies in throughout Washington state are independent organizations but they're dependent on each other as well yeah, I see to yeah. share resources Wow, wonderful uh, could you tell us what specific services because you have many uh, we, we had been talking before the show about a number of services you provide. Could you outline what they are for our audience? I think uh, one of the things about Safe Place, I kind of think it's um, uh, one of the best kept secrets of Thurston County, really, because it has three 24 hour programs. And many people think of us as a shelter, but our three 24-hour programs consist of a 24-hour crisis line, mm -hmm. and that's the 754-6300 number. Mm -hmm. In addition to the crisis line, we also have 24-hour response to sexual assault survivors. Wherever they are, whatever their needs are, mm -hmm. we have a group of individuals that go to where that survivor is and provide support, primarily uh, for forensic exams to the hospital, but whatever else they need as well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have our 24-hour uh, shelter as well. Um, so the three 24-hour programs work closely together to provide a broad array of services um, that whatever the survivor needs, mm -hmm. uh, we try to provide that, which is, you can imagine, a very complex um, series of services that need to be available associated with those three 24-hour programs. Right. All kinds of client assistance, things anywhere from changing locks to food, mm -hmm. uh, to emergency transportation, cabs, bus rides, mm -hmm. um, child care services, on-site at the shelter. Mm -hmm. We have, um, in addition to the three 24-hour programs that are emergency, rather, responses, we also provide in the community support groups, weekly support groups, mm -hmm. two to three weekly support groups. And um, during this, we are one of the only places in the state that provides a support group for Spanish-speaking individuals, those mm -hmm. that uh, only speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really dynamic group. It's really been wonderful and uh, has really um, brought us a lot of rich um, understandings, I think, of, of the violence that occurs in, in that particular community. Mm -hmm. uh, so in addition to the three support groups, we also provide legal clinics twice a month right here at our community service slash business office. Right. And um, in addition to that, of course, walk-in advocacy. People can walk in and get resources mm -hmm. and support right here at our, our community service office. It's, a, it's, it's anything that a survivor needs, basically, that's what Safe Place is to provide. Legal advocacy in the courts, um, Safe Place also provides that. We have mm -hmm. a bilingual legal advocate that provides that service. Uh, so she's very busy doing that. And also we work closely with St. Peter's Hospital mm -hmm. uh, for the forensic exams and Monarch Children's Justice and Advocacy Center. Our staff go there two to three times a week to help out the families of children who have been sexually or physically wow. abused. And uh, how long might uh, um, a client need your services? We're here for as long as they need us. Mm -hmm. uh, now when you're in the shelter, the stay, uh, for you, a few years ago, it was around 24 days. Now the average is about a 34-day stay, but they can stay up to 60 days at our shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, but for, for survivors, as, as long as they need what we can provide and as long as they need that support, we're here for them. Right. We do a lot of emergency intervention, crisis intervention, but mm -hmm. also long-term support as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what the support groups are for and ongoing uh, connection with the advocates here. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when they're going through a court case, for example, that can be a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. And we're here for that, the, the long term. Mm -hmm. And um, how is Safe Place unique in what it offers clients in our area? How is it unique? It's, it's ex extremely unique in the sense that it, the social justice approach basically is about what is an empowerment approach. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that when survivors are experiencing sexual and domestic violence, there is a lot of a demeaning kind of behavior that, right. that they have survived. Right. And so our job is to lift up the survivor mm -hmm. and help the survivor recognize that they have capabilities again, mm -hmm. that they are good parents again, mm -hmm. uh, to support th what they need to escape, um, to get back to a healthy life, get back to mm -hmm. a safe life, mm -hmm. 
Um, so it is a real wraparound holistic approach to whatever the needs of that survivor is. And mm -hmm. it can, has to be very unique because we have people that come to us from a broad variety of uh, uh, religious communities. Mm -hmm. uh, we work uh, with the gay and lesbian transgender community. Mm -hmm. We work with the poor. We work with the wealthy. Wonderful. Uh, it has to be a very broad uh, right. response. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a number of staff here uh, that, that help operate the uh, safe place, um, uh, these the staff probably get special training too, huh? They do. We have a very intense 48-hour training. It's um, <clears throat> If it doesn't change your life, then you're probably not paying attention. It's a really... <laughs> Uh, it's a really in-depth in uh, training that challenges our values and mm -hmm. challenges our belief systems mm -hmm. uh, because we want to be um, available for everyone and make sure that any biases that we may have had when we came in right. are altered and changed and right. forever disposed of because mm -hmm. whatever is presented in front of you, you need to be responsive. So we have a very strong anti-oppression mm -hmm. framework on our training. Mm -hmm. uh, it generally runs around three weeks. It's free to those that are going to continue to volunteer with Safe Place. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a cost that varies up to $1,200, depending if it's for a professional person who wishes to have that information for their professional career, then we charge more. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to volunteer at Safe Place, we will grant you that uh, training. And uh, we ask a year of volunteer time. You have a number of volunteers that are, are, are very interested and work very well for a Safe Place. Um, who are some of these volunteers and how do they help out in the agency? We generally have between 45 and sometimes up to high, as high as 90 volunteers and they work throughout the entire agency. Mm -hmm. They provide child care at the shelter and child care during our support groups, some of them. They help us with administrative help. We have mm -hmm. volunteers that come in and, and give us a break at the front desk for mm -hmm. when people come in. We have volunteers that do data entry on a weekly basis. Wow. We have uh, volunteers that assist us with the in, with in, with interpretation, mm -hmm. uh, with clerical support, with uh, outside just cleaning around the shelter and mm -hmm. doing yard work uh, here and at our shelter. So it's just it ranges from A to Z. There's just a lot of opportunities for volunteerism. Mm -hmm. And if people are interested in volunteering, how can they reach you? What should they do? They can check our website, www.safeplaceolympia.org, because there is a safe place in Texas, so it has to be mm -hmm. safeplaceolympia.org. Mm -hmm. um, or they can find us on Facebook or, or give us a call here at 786-8754. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our volunteer application on our website. Uh, three times a year the trainings are provided and the dates generally are up on the website. If not, they can give us a call here. The applications are there and people can fill them out and complete them. And um, there is an interviewing process uh, before a person can come to, uh, to volunteer. And it, mm -hmm. it's a pretty thorough interviewing process because we want to make sure that we provide the right service and that the right, right. people are here to help us. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the person volunteering gets to know that that uh, he or she is in the right place for their aptitude and their uh, skill set. And Absolutely. Right. And we want to make sure that the volunteer has a good experience. Mm -hmm. And we also want to make sure that they are able to provide the right kind of service to the people that we are serving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, if someone uh, does want to donate, for example, to Safe Place, how do they do that? Uh, Safe Place is quite dependent on the community for donations. Mm -hmm. About uh, close to anywhere from two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year comes into Safe Place in financial help throughout the year, throughout every year. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we also get uh, because we run a twenty-four hour shelter, mm -hmm. the sheets and towels and washcloths and paper products that are needed in any home are also needed in our shelter. Mm -hmm. Shampoo, conditioner, soap dish soap, all of those kinds of things are donated by the community. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in donating any of those items, you can check out our website where we keep a wish list up to date mm -hmm. on anything that we need at that point in time. Mm -hmm. the pretty standard ones, though, are the, the towels and, and right. the consumable products. Mm -hmm. And um, the wish list is always available. And is Safe Place on the combined fund drive for yes. state employees? Safe Place is one of the uh, participants of the mm -hmm. combined fund drive. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we, we depend on state employees. State employees have been very generous to Safe Place and have helped us out over the years. So if any listener wants to do that as mm -hmm. well, it's really a great resource for mm -hmm. us. Wonderful. And we have, uh, I, I notice your building here looks pretty crowded. There's an awful lot that goes on here. We have some time to maybe kind of be, uh, 
um, to give you to elaborate a little bit on what your plans are to actually expand your facilities. What are you doing and what are some of the plans and what do you see happening? Sure. Well, when Safe Place, when this building was first purchased, I think we, we, it, was a, it was a great resource for Safe Place and it was a great help. But one of the things that we didn't really take a look at is the needs of the kids, I think, probably as well as we, we should have, really. Mm. Um, so right now our children, when they're coming in with their parents, are ending up in the hallway because we don't have a space for the kids. All oh, right. So the building really works well for the administrative staff, but mm -hmm. it doesn't work as well as it should be for the kids and for the parents that come with them. Mm -hmm. We have right now just a limited room. And so years ago, the board of directors determined that if we were to continue to expand our sexual assault services and the domestic violence services, we're going to have to expand the facility. Right. And so uh, because we serve thousands of people a year, this, the facility just wasn't adequate. So we have been looking around the community at what we can get and what we can buy and what we can renovate. And uh, through all of that process, the board has determined to build on site in this building that we're currently in is actually going to be put on wheels and moved. Wow. And we have somebody that's interested in the building to take it over, and so it'll have a whole other life oh, great. at another location. Excellent. And so, and the, the new building will, would be where? New building will be right here mm -hmm. and right next door uh, in the parking lot that we also own. So there'll be a 4,000 square foot footprint mm -hmm. that the new building will be built on. There'll be three stories, mm -hmm. uh, adequate space on the first floor for a warm and welcoming lobby for people to come in. And mm -hmm. it's on a, a side uh, of the lobby will be a restaurant. Um, one of the dynamic parts about safe places is that uh, for the Spanish-speaking women that have been attending our support group, a number of them after attending the support group for a year decided they want to help people just like themselves. Oh, excellent. So they created a pop-up restaurant called Mijas. Mm -hmm. Mijas considers safe place the kind of their mothership for mm -hmm. growing and expanding. Mm -hmm. And they are going to be in a small restaurant off of, off of the lo lobby of the new building. Mm -hmm. And they will manage and uh, manage the lobby and the restaurant and have food available for people during the day. Mm. and uh, be accessible to the community. It's a community kitchen that we're creating, mm -hmm. but it's an educational community kitchen mm -hmm. so that the women that we serve that are Spanish-speaking and other women can learn restaurant skills, food preparation, serving skills, food ordering, uh, and then if they care to, then go on and create um, their own business. And you said that... Um that you serve literally thousands of people a year? We do. Safe Place serves, for example, at our legal clinics. Um, we have served over 500, and, well, for legal advocacy, over 525 people in 2012. We also provided um, a response to 244 individuals in our shelter. Mm -hmm. We also served 247 sexual assault cl clients, mm. assisted... Um, 23 individuals at children's at Monarch Children's Justice and Advocacy Center throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of individuals, over 200, 300 individuals, I think, through our support groups. Mm -hmm. So there's just a number of people that, 320 some individuals at our shelter alone. Wow. 4,500 on our hotline. So there's, and then we do community presentations throughout the year as well. And there were about 34 presentations throughout 2012. Mm -hmm. And close to 200, 300 individuals, two or 300 individuals attended those uh, trainings. So we're having a, a very large outreach to mm -hmm. people in prevention opportunities and direct service as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, we have a, a growing community of, of seniors here in Thurston County. And on uh, that age cohort is only going to grow even mm. faster in the mm. next 10 to 15 years. How are senior citizens involved in Safe Place, either as volunteers or even as clients? Uh, both, in, in both ways. We wow. serve um, the elderly. I think that one of the things that the outreach is showing us is the youth and those individuals that are older as well mm. are the expansion efforts for Safe Place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really important that we, the, we did a, re a survey within the community just recently because of a federal opportunity, federal grant we received. Wonderful. And people have said you need to do more with youth in, in schools and mm -hmm. out of schools, just get to the youth. Right. And also we recognize uh, for the older older individual and the elderly, it's again, um, it's a kept secret 
uh, mm -hmm. among the elderly that are victims of sexual or domestic violence. Mm -hmm. When you do presentations to them, they know exactly what you're mm -hmm. talking about, wow. and they've been there. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of people on staff, a number of, of volunteers as well, that are older individuals that do help us with our programs. Mm -hmm. But I see that as a real growth area for Safe Place. And for seniors who may be victims of, of, of domestic violence or, or sexual assault, is, is that primarily in the home, or can it sometimes even be in uh, residences, uh, nursing homes, or other places? We have seen that. We have seen um, elder abuse occur within the nursing home. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really tragic. Wherever you see it, it's very tragic. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But you, know, you particularly don't want to see it for someone that is providing care. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that care is provided in the home by mm -hmm. a family member, and mm -hmm. we have also seen that type of abuse. We work closely with Adult Protective Services mm -hmm. and make sure that our staff understand the resources that are available there if we, mm -hmm. if we need to uh, make a, a report to uh, the Adult Protective Services. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing about Safe Place. It has to be available for all age groups. Right. Uh, because, unfortunately, it occurs in all age groups. Mm -hmm. And you're heavily involved now in your um, capital development drive for the new building that you're talking about. Can you uh, elaborate for a little bit with us? We have some time uh, about what that drive consists of, what your timeline is, how much you've raised so far, what you're planning to do to finish the drive. We are... Um very proud. Safe Place received a grant from the um, uh, Washington State's Department of Commerce Wonderful. through the Building Communities Fund. And mm -hmm. uh, so that is money that the legislature has set aside for Safe Place, $778,000. And in addition to that, we have a number of supporters in the community from Olympia Federal Savings and Loan Bank, South Sound Bank, mm -hmm. um, and individual, it just individuals have given uh, as well. So mm -hmm. we are right now at $2.6 million of a $4.7 million campaign. Oh, I see. It's okay. expensive, but we're at 55% and we're still rolling. Excellent. We're, um, we're doing house parties. So, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had a house party in my home where we invited individuals in the community to come in and I provided food and mm -hmm. drinks for people. And we had 35 people there and we're saying, can you give over time? one to two year pledge commitment, if mm -hmm. not a one time gift. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun to go into, I just did one um, last night, and it's fun to do, go into people's homes and invite mm -hmm. people that they know, meet mm -hmm. new people, mm -hmm. talk about the campaign, give people an opportunity to participate and give. And they've been very generous. And what's your timeline to complete this? If we can get another a million and a half, and we're working hard on that right now, mm -hmm. uh, by July of this year, we mm -hmm. will be ready to start building this year in 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, then we're, will we be building in 2014 with a 2015 uh, completion? Right. So we're working hard to get the house parties and donations mm -hmm. coming in so that we can actually start building this year. So the rest of the money that you need really would come from individuals or groups? Uh, we are also writing grants. Oh, excellent. We're okay. also trying to work with the different cities of Tumwater, Lacey, and Olympia. Right. And I'm going to be visiting Yelm and Tanino as well, mm -hmm. working with the service clubs in the community to see what they can do as well. We've mm -hmm. been... I've had a great response from uh, South Sound um, Rotary. I did an auction, excellent. and we were the recipient of the uh, raise your card during their auction, and mm -hmm. they were generous, and we got $30,000 from them for our campaign. Wonderful. Company. That Wonderful. was a tremendous effort, and they yes. did a great job for us. So organizations like the Rotary can uh, volunteer to, to have some event that can help this really important resource. Yes, the Lions Clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, Hawks Prairie Lions Club, uh, mm -hmm. Sunrise Club gave us um, $8,000, mm -hmm. and um, we're approaching the numerous uh, Lions Clubs and Rotary Clubs mm -hmm. and Kiwanis Clubs to mm -hmm. help us with this as well. But it's, it's in churches and just mm -hmm. every, every organization you can imagine. We're mm -hmm. looking at the musicians and the artists mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. uh, the medical community, the legal community, mm -hmm. and um, people have been generous, and it's, uh, it, it just really what it means is just making a contact with people and asking mm -hmm. where can they get involved. Because mm -hmm. that's really what community is, that's what that it we're is. all in this together to help each other out in whatever we need, whatever help we need. And Safe Places doesn't have a national arm. Mm -hmm. It's a local community uh, organization created by local people and sustained by the community. And that's mm -hmm. what we want to continue to see. Wonderful. We always asked our guests at the end of each show, what are one or two of the things you like most about living in Thurston County? 
Well, I love my job. <laughs> I love my job, and I love who I get to work with. It's mm -hmm. just a wonderful group of people. I have the best board of directors I've ever had, and I've been doing this work for over 31 years now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love Thurston County because it's beautiful. It's green. It yes. has, it's a very refreshing climate and mm -hmm. uh, very intelligent and refreshing people. So mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, I'm from the eastern Washington, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't love, leave here for anything. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a real stimulating environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it here. Yeah, we need you here. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, Safe Place provides an invaluable service to those people who experience domestic or sexual abuse and who need a caring and compassionate safe place to heal. We are happy then to discuss, to be able to discuss the good work of Safe Place and encourage all our viewers to please help Safe Place in whatever way you can. Uh, if you want more information about Safe Place Olympia, please check out their website at www.safeplaceolympia.org. Our half-hour public affairs show is produced once a month in Olympia and airs twice weekly, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. and Fridays at 5 p.m. on Comcast Cable 22. Tell your friends about us and also check us out on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash around Thurston County. We hope to see you again soon. Thanks. <music>